If you've seen in my last few videos, you're probably thinking, hey Tranquilo, what's gotten into you? Why are you so cynical and hateful of AEW all of a sudden? Has Tony Khan stopped paying your bills? And the truth is yes, he has stopped paying my bills. Before anybody takes that seriously, I'd like to say that I still very much enjoy AEW. I mean, sure, I think it's obvious that maybe I'm not as into it as I once was when the focus of the whole show was the elite and also last summer when CM Punk, Brian Danielson, and Adam Cole arrived in the company. But that's perfectly okay. I go through phases in my wrestling fandom where sometimes I'm more interested than other other times, that doesn't mean that AEW isn't still the best thing we have in wrestling today. One thing I love about AEW since day one was their willingness to work with other companies to form working relationships. AEW has worked with everyone at this point. New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact, Tokyo Joshi Pro, even the indie promotion that I'm running out of my backyard, but it's their working relationship with Japanese promotion DDT Pro Wrestling, which was once home to stars like Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi, that has introduced a western wrestling audience to Japanese rising star. Konosuke Takeshita. Takeshita is currently on a year-long excursion in America and AEW was the destination chosen for him to push himself, learn from the very best, and wrestle the very best that America has to offer, while also hopefully finding himself as a character and becoming a star in the United States and returning an even bigger star when he goes back home to Japan. But first, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. If you've heard of Raid Shadow Legends, you know that it's got a ton of champions, over 600 now, but it's also got an insane variety of bosses too. My personal favorite, the boss of the dungeons, Dragon. Just like AEW's American Dragon, this dude is gnarly and will put up a fight. The Dragon's got two main tricks, terrible breath and a host of debuffs. Try bringing champions that can clear debuffs and put up shields if you want to try and tank Hellraiser's breath attack. And just a heads up, this month Raid is bringing out five badass looking new champions that are can't miss. There's also an overhaul on the champions vault and they've got a load of awesome smaller updates as well. On top of that, Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. Oh, and one more thing. You got it. Ultimate Death Knight, coming August 2022. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click the link in my description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Richter Drath, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, so you better get in now if you want to be a part of it. Thanks guys. In professional wrestling, going on an excursion has helped shape some of the best professional wrestlers that have ever lived. In the case of Japanese talent, going on an excursion, whether it's to Mexico, whether it's to the US or the UK, is done to either sharpen the talents and give them some experience outside of their comfort zone so they can learn more and develop their craft more. But a wrestler can also be sent on excursion when they're not connecting with the audience in a way that the booker or promoter originally envisioned for them. Perhaps the most popular example in this category would be to Tetsuya Naito, who was sent back on excursion to Mexico when he was rejected by the Japanese audience when he was being pushed as the next big babyface in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He would report to CMLL, form an allegiance with Los Ingobernables, discovered the Tranquilo lifestyle, which desperately gave him the gimmick he needed to stand out, and most importantly, to entertain in a persona that he felt comfortable in, so that when he returned to New Japan Pro Wrestling, he was a made superstar with a unique persona who was welcomed with open arms by an audience who had previously rejected him. This is probably one of the biggest success stories when it comes to sending a wrestler on excursion. It proves that a wrestler going abroad and finding their feet and finding out who they want to be in this business can be crucial for their development. But that's just one side of the coin. Not all excursions are massive success stories like the one of Tetsuya Naito. For those who weren't watching back then, it might be a bit hard to believe this, but the last two big faces of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Kazuchika Okada and Hiroshi Tanahashi, were both sent on excursion to TNA during the LOL TNA days, so you can only imagine how big of a disaster this was. It was actually so bad that New Japan refused to do any business with TNA after that for over a decade. There was one positive out of all of this, however. Kazuchika Okada did find the idea for his Rainmaker persona after working with Elijah Burke in TNA. Damn, that's wild. So the point I'm trying to make here is companies having working relationships for excursions are two-way streets. Both companies have to do their part. One company sends their bright young prospects and the other has 
to do their parts by giving them time to develop and time to wrestle against the best wrestlers they have in their company. Because as CM Punk once said, how do you plan on becoming the best if you're not allowed to step in the ring with the best to at least learn from them? And I'll talk more about it in a bit, but it's not whether they win or lose against the top talent in the company, it's how they look against them. Because as you'll learn shortly, you can look like an absolute beast in defeat. It's all a matter of believability. If the audience can believe that you have a chance of winning, then you've already done your part. Which brings us to the main topic of today's video. When I heard that AEW was receiving their first talents on excursion for a year, I had high hopes because AEW tends to treat foreign talents better than most companies in America. Furthermore, AEW is really respectful of their working relationships with other promotions. It would take a disaster of catastrophic proportions for AEW to drop the ball on a talent on excursion the way that TNA did multiple times. Because the talent they received from DDT Pro Wrestling isn't just any talent, the wrestler they received is is rising Japanese star Konosuke Takeshita, who has been dubbed by many the future of Japanese pro wrestling. But before I get into his excursion in AEW so far, I did want to give a brief recap on Konosuke Takeshita's time in Japan before his year-long stay in America. Now while making this video, I did think to myself, a recap of Takeshita's time in Japan needs to be done by someone who knows Japanese wrestling like the back of their hands. And for this video, I have the pleasure of welcoming you and introducing you guys to my good friend Kim, who's gonna let you guys know why Takeshita is is such a big deal. So without further ado, the stage is all yours, Keem. Thanks, Tranquilo. So let's talk about our Cinnabon injected spectacle over here. Konosuke Takeshita was born on May 29th, 1995 in Osaka, Japan. At an early age with a background in track and field, Konosuke was regarded as a future prodigy when he was admitted to the world-renowned Nippon Sports Science University, a school that has modeled some of the most famous athletes and entertainers in Japan. In addition, Konosuke also tried to qualify for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics as a decathlete. Dubbed as the future of DDT, Takeshita began training under the promotion DDT Pro Wrestling, formed by President Sanshiro Takagi. For nine years going on to ten, Takeshita has faced some of the biggest names in wrestling, ranging from Kota Ibushi, Kenny Omega, El Generico, Jun Akiyama, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and many others. Takeshita would win the King of DDT tournament twice in 2019 and 2021, the KOD Tag Team Championships four times, and the KOD Openweight Championship, the biggest title in DDT, five times, while also continuing to be the youngest champion in that Openweight title's history. Takeshita is an excellent singles competitor who can also shine in many tag match situations as well. As the leader of the 37 Kamina faction with fellow stablemates Mao, Yuki Ueno, Shunma Katsumata, and Toi Kojima, Takeshita and Shunma would become KOD Tag Team Champions for 108 days. While he was enjoying success in DDT, along with the occasional dips in interpromotional events with Pro Wrestling Noah in All Japan, Takeshita would be summoned for a short excursion to America, and more specifically, All Elite Wrestling, which Tranquilo will explain more in the video. Simply put, Takeshita is the real deal. His credentials speak for himself, and the scary part is that he's just getting started. Whether you see him as a Japanese phenom currently, or have been following him as a future DDT for years, one thing is clear, Konosuke Takeshita cannot be denied, and is becoming a potential mainstay in America waiting to take over professional wrestling. No, that wasn't bad. Back to you, Tranquilo. Thanks a lot, Keem. Your endless knowledge of Japanese wrestling has definitely helped me with this video. If you guys can do me a huge favor and show my boy Keem some love at Keem Wins Again on Twitter, it would be greatly appreciated. Definitely a funny and ruthless dude who's worth a follow. So thanks a lot, Keem. I couldn't make this video without you. So as we just heard from Keem, the accolades that Takeshita picked up in Japan are endless. This isn't just some rookie who's coming to AEW to learn the basics. And as Keem said as well, he's just getting started, which is the scary part. Kenny Omega has long been in a bad ambassador and supporter of Takeshita's which makes sense because there's the DDT pro wrestling connection but also because Kenny Omega knows professional wrestling it's the reason why all your favorites from WWE say they want to face him one day but if you want to wrestle Kenny Omega you got to go to AEW because he doesn't go to you you come to him isn't that right Brian Danielson anyway I digress Konosuke Takeshita is a professional wrestler so he came to America to wrestle in the home of professional wrestling all elite wrestling and since his arrival to AEW in early April this year, he's been nothing short of amazing. He started off getting a few easy wins on AEW Dark while also wowing audiences in short bursts. And keep in mind that Takeshita actually made three appearances on AEW programming last year, and while he did wrestle, they were more like cameos rather than showcases. This time around, he's staying in America for a year, and it's AEW's job to present him as best as they can and utilize him as best as they can. So 
after the aforementioned dark matches, Takeshita was finally given a spot on TV where he faced Jay Lethal on an episode of Rampage. And despite a losing effort, Takeshita introduced himself to a TV audience that was then captivated by his in-ring work and began to demand to see more of him on television. Tony Khan is a by-the-numbers booker and wrestling promoter. If he sees that there's interest in something, then he'll definitely book it for AEW TV. So what did that crazy bastard do next? He booked AEW World Champion Adam Page versus Konosuke Takeshita on Dynamite in a non-title match in the lead up to Hangman vs CM Punk. And this, my friends, is the moment I knew that Konosuke Takeshita was in good hands in All Elite Wrestling. For nearly 13 minutes on AEW's A Show, Dynamite, Konosuke Takeshita took it to the then AEW World Champion Hangman Adam Page. And if AEW wasn't as good as they were putting on banger matches every single week, then this match, Hangman versus Konosuke Takeshita would have easily have been a match of the year contender in any other year. This is the moment that the American audience fell in love with the Japanese rising star known as Takeshita. For AEW to allow this bright prospect but also admittedly this unknown wrestler to American audiences to stand toe to toe with their world champion at the time was a bold move but man did it pay off as the audiences gave both wrestlers a standing ovation when the match was over. Instead of Hangman looking weak because he couldn't make quick work of Takeshita, it was Takeshita who actually looked like a superstar for hanging so long with the hangman. Takeshita was given the opportunity here to shine and he just completely knocked it out of the park. And because he did so well here, he earned the trust of everybody in AEW and he has now been afforded more opportunities after this match. Since then, we've continued to see this dude have consistent insane performances for AEW which include the Casino Battle Royale, the Royal Rampage where he was given his own standout moments over other wrestlers who have long been with AEW and rightfully so, his insane stiff match with Eddie Kingston on Rampage and of course his recent match against AEW interim world champion John Moxley. Tony Khan must really trust Takeshita to have given him two matches already against two of his world champions. That's almost unheard of in any company for someone in their rookie year with a promotion to have faced two world champions already in under three months. There's a level of trust here that Tony Khan has with Takeshita and he knows that he has a gem in his hands. And how could he not after yet another jaw-dropping performance against Jon Moxley, Takeshita has cemented himself as a fan favorite in AEW. If his match against Hangman was him announcing himself to the world, his match against Jon Moxley was him cementing his place in AEW. But here's the thing, Takeshita has now won the crowd over so much that they now want to see him win. And I'm one of those people too, and I know it'll come with due time. Tony Khan knows what he has with Takeshita, otherwise he wouldn't be booked as strongly against some of his top wrestlers. This might very well be the first time in a very long time that we're seeing a wrestler's excursion blow up in real time on television for a major American promotion. I'm full on board and here to announce that I'm officially pushing the Takeshita for All Atlantic Champion agenda. I mean come on that championship was made for him a work rate title for foreigners to fight over. Whether he wins a title or not in AEW before he leaves next year one thing's for sure. Kanosuke Takeshita's excursion with AEW is proving to be one of the most successful excursions in recent memory, but the sky seems to be the limits for the Japanese rising star, and the word rising will be retired very soon when it comes to describing Takeshita, because in my opinion, he's already getting up there. And we're only three months into his year-long stay in AEW, so who knows what else is in store for him. And when it comes to AEW themselves, they've seemed to set the bar really high when it comes to talent who choose them for their excursions. And if they're all gonna be like this, then I really can't wait to see who the next foreign talent will be to walk through that forbidden door.